glutathione, the brain aid, the liver aid, all combating the horrible effects of that horrible thing we know of called oxygen, right? Okay, so what's crazy here is oxygen is not always an amazing thing within the body. Obviously, it's necessary, but there are some byproducts when it comes down to oxygen metabolism, when it comes down to that aerobic metabolism. And I want to talk about something called glutathione in this video. You see, we hear about glutathione all the time. We hear kind of surface level stuff about how it might be able to help the brain, how it might be able to help the liver, and we hear a lot of kind of the neuro gurus talking about how it could be a potential uh, nootropic and help brain activity. Well, they're kind of right, but I want to explain the metabolic process and how glutathione actually works in the body and how you can naturally increase your levels of glutathione so your body can find that homeostasis that it needs to perform at its best. So here's the thing. Glutathione is actually a peptide. It's a peptide of three different amino acids. So it's glutamic acid, it's cysteine, and it's glycine. Those three amino acids combined create a peptide that's also known as GSH, or in this case, glutathione. Now, glutathione has a lot of different functions within the body, but it's mainly geared towards oxygen metabolism. You see, we have aerobic cells within the body. Those aerobic cells combine oxygen with other components of the body to create energy. Well, whenever they create energy, they have a certain level of cellular waste, aerobic waste, oxygen waste. Specifically, in this case, something called the reactive oxygen species, or ROS. In this video, I'm going to refer to glutathione as GSH, and I'm going to refer to the reactive oxygen species as ROS. Now, that ROS sounds like a horrible thing because it's a byproduct or it's cell waste. However, it's also important because if we don't have that level of ROS, our body never knows how to regulate cell metabolism. It never knows how to regulate energy when it comes to aerobic metabolism. So although it's not necessarily a bad thing, when it is in excess, it can become bad. And that's where glutathione comes in. So this GSH plays a big role in actually mitigating the excess oxygen or the reactive oxygen species that occurs when we have aerobic metabolism. So it's basically a hardcore antioxidant, a hardcore free radical eliminator that specifically works with aerobic cells so that we can get the most out of our oxygen and ultimately get the most out of our days in the office, in the workplace, and also in the gym and at home. So the body's all about balance, right? You know, we have these natural negative feedback loops, these natural feedback loops that always keep things in homeostasis. And I know homeostasis is kind of a term that's thrown around a lot for people to sound smart sometimes, but a lot of times homeostasis is critical. All of our hormones have this level of homeostasis where they're always trying to find balance. Well, whenever you have any kind of cell metabolism as well, there's always this level of homeostasis. Your body's finding balance. You see, if your body goes into a really injured state where the cells are really damaged because you're overtraining or because you're super stressed, well then your body is going to have a lot more free radicals. So consequently, to find balance, your body's gonna increase some of these natural antioxidants. In this case, glutathione is one of the most potent ones. The body's gonna naturally increase those levels so it can bring the levels back to normal, keep you in balance. The problem is sometimes our glutathione stores can get depleted. And what happens then is then we have oxidative stress that overwhelms the body and can make you feel downright miserable and weak. So let's talk about the benefits of glutathione or GSH. Let's talk about specifically what people seek glutathione out for. Okay, let's talk about one. It's protecting you from a lot of toxins, environmental and internal. So basically, internal toxins being the cell waste, external toxins being alcohol, being things outside, BPAs, all these different toxins that we're exposed to. Well, glutathione can help mitigate those, obviously reducing the oxidative stress. Additionally, glutathione is known to reduce peroxide levels. So basically peroxide, like hydrogen peroxide, are natural bleaching agents. They're a byproduct of cell metabolism as well, and glutathione can help reduce those. Now, additionally, glutathione also helps with the metabolism, taking some of the stress off the liver so that the liver can produce the enzymes and the hormones that it needs to help metabolize food, metabolize fat, metabolize sugar, and ultimately make you feel your best. And then, of course, glutathione is going to help out your immune system because when the body's not under that kind of stress, when the liver's able to do its job, when the brain's able to do its job and send signals appropriately, well, then your immune system works better. Your inflammatory responses go down. Your immunoglobulins A, your immunoglobulin B, all those IgA, IgB, IgM immunoglobulins go down and it allows your body to heal, plain and simple. But for the sake of this video, I want to specifically talk about how glutathione works for the brain and works for the liver because those are the most exciting components. I think you're gonna get the most benefit out of that. Okay, so the brain. The brain makes up 2% of our overall body weight yet it utilizes 20% of our overall oxygen in the entire body. 
So you do the math right there and you can kind of figure it out that the brain is running on a high amount of oxygen per overall weight. So what that tells us is there's going to be a large amount of oxidative stress. There's going to be per capita a lot more ROS as a result of oxidative metabolism than there would be anywhere else in the body. What that means is glutathione is going to be more important in the brain than in any other portion of the body. In order for that cell recovery to occur, in order for that cell damage to stop, for our brain cells to stop dying, and for us to be able to actually grow neurologically and in the brain, we need those levels of glutathione. Now glutathione doesn't just magically appear in the brain. Like I said earlier in this video, it has to be synthesized. And generally the GSH that's synthesized in the brain is synthesized from a specific amino acid called cysteine. And that cysteine is triggered by a specific enzyme that's called a glutamate cysteine lipase enzyme. That enzyme reacts with the cysteine to create the GSH that allows the brain to recover. Now here's the kicker. We have so many different components of our brain doing so many different things that we actually require different precursors for GSH for different components of the brain. Now for the sake of this video, I'm going to stick to cysteine because cysteine seems to be the most common amino that needs to be synthesized in order to produce that GSH. So if you consume the right kind of precursors from the right kind of diet or the right kind of amino acid consumption, your brain can produce that glutathione. It's actually being shown that your brain responds better with the precursors to glutathione than it does with direct exogenous use of say a glutathione supplement. Now let's talk about the liver and specifically how the liver works when it's metabolizing alcohol and how glutathione actually plays a pretty big part in that. You see, when you take a sip of alcohol, when you're out with your friends and you're just chilling, you take that sip of alcohol, as soon as it hits your mouth, as soon as it hits your saliva, it is converted into something called acetaldehyde. Now I've done videos on acetaldehyde before and I go in more depth. You see, but not all of that alcohol is converted into acetaldehyde, only most of it. So the remainder travels down into your liver where the liver converts the rest into acetaldehyde. Well, newsflash, acetaldehyde is probably one of the most toxic things that you can possibly consume. So what does the liver do? The liver prioritizes the metabolism of that acetaldehyde. It stops it in its tracks and it does everything that it can, stopping all other metabolic processes to make sure that it can break down this acetaldehyde. Well, how does it do that? It uses glutathione or GSH. You see that glutathione in a way actually somewhat neutralizes the acetaldehyde. It neutralizes it to something that's about the acidity of vinegar, turning something that's super, super toxic into something that's not all that toxic after all. So that shows the importance of glutathione stores in the liver. So now if you're exhausted or if you're training hard or if you're super overall just fatigued and stressed out, well then your glutathione levels are going to be depleted. Your overall aminos that make up those glutathione stores are going to be depleted, which means your liver isn't going to be able to process that acetaldehyde, which means all the other metabolic processes go on the back burner. Creating enzymes, digesting food, creating bile, all the things that are necessary for survival start going on the back burner while the liver is just churning and churning and working really, really hard to produce this glutathione. So I wasn't born yesterday. I know that now all of you are probably sitting here watching saying, okay, well, how do I boost my glutathione levels? How do I specifically boost my glutathione levels if I'm going out with my friends and I want to have a drink? Okay, well, right now, the evidence is pretty inconclusive. There's not a lot of science supporting the exogenous use of pure glutathione. You see, since that glutathione response is sort of a negative feedback response based on your body trying to find homeostasis to different situations, taking exogenous glutathione may not actually impact your overall glutathione stores. However, what it is being shown is that if you take the precursors to glutathione, like some of these amino acids, particularly cysteine, if you take cysteine, then your body is able to produce more glutathione. You're better off giving your body the fuel to actually produce glutathione than you are just taking an exogenous supplement. Now, another thing that you can do is take milk thistle. If you take milk thistle, then you can take some of the stress off the liver so the liver can produce more glutathione so it can actually fight against the toxins that it needs to fight against. So at the end of the day, this wasn't a fix-all for all of your problems, but I'm going to do more videos that explain how this process works, how the liver actually detoxes, and how cell metabolism works when it comes to burning fat, when it comes to getting the most out of your brain, when it comes down to just plain feeling good. So as always, leave your comments below. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see specifically pertaining to this topic and specifically pertaining to alcohol consumption and how our bodies work when it comes to detoxifying all the horrible things that we're constantly doing to them. As always, keep it locked in on my videos, and I will see you in the next one.